And then um, this case is a 30 year old, a younger male with a retroperitoneal mass. You can see again, we have a lot of cores of tissue here, so a good amount of tissue. Um, you know, typically we we only get little pieces, but this was again a really good biopsy. And we see some cellular zones, and then some more kind of either in a, uh, fibrotic or necrotic areas. When we look at the cellular zones, we see these um, kind of epithelioid shaped cells arranged in this almost sieve like growth pattern. Um, in other areas, the, sheet, the cells were more uh, arranged in a more sheet-like growth pattern. There was obvious mitotic activity that you can see here, pretty again, pretty pretty readily identifiable mitotic figures. And then we almost have some areas where we have some, some signet ring cells. So my fellow brought this to me, and he he saw that the outside had done a keratin and it was positive, and he was thinking, is this some kind of myoepithelial carcinoma? But I just reminded him, you know, to think of common things in the retroperitoneum in a young male and a tumor with a lot of necrosis. I'm always thinking about a germ cell tumor. Um, so a SAL4 was done um, in this case, and it was positive, and um, this ended up being a yolk sac tumor. So young male male patients, especially in the retroperitoneum or even older male patients, when you get the history of a calcified retroperitoneal mass, think about germ cell tumors. I've seen them um, called sarcomas or, or uh, having them raise a suspicion of sarcomas many times. So again, just a potential pitfall. Um, some pitfalls with immunohistochemistry in this scenario. Just remember that keratins can be aberrantly expressed in some sarcomas like leiomyosarcomas and vascular neoplasms. Um, also remember that there's some sarcomas that are by definition keratin positive, like epithelioid sarcoma and synovial sarcoma. So you're going to see keratin staining sometimes in mesenchymal tumors. Always be aware of S100 staining in dendritic cells. Um, this is an uh, example on the right um, of, a, of a superficial tumor with just some S100 staining. And at first glance, it might look like there's um, positivity, but just just recognize that these are actually cells with these long processes. So these are just dendritic cells. So make sure you're looking at the right population when you're an analyzing immunostains. And then finally, some mesenchymal neoplasms can have melanocytic differentiation, like clear cell sarcoma and pecoma. Um, and before I make the diagnosis of melanoma in a younger patient, especially when I can't find an in situ component, I always think about clear cell sarcoma and think about doing FISH for EWs R1. And finally, you know, if things aren't making sense, repeat stains. Um, you know, in the one case, you know, the S100 was was negative and I, you know, I really thought it was melanoma. So repeat stains if they aren't doing, if they aren't making sense, do additional markers, um, kind of follow your instinct.